online at consumerqb.com. Hey, and we're back. Brandon Rhymes here. Consumer Quarterback Show, helping you win in any marketplace. Powered by the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty, a top 100 ranked uh, real estate team here in Tampa Bay. Uh, we got a special guest, uh, Charlie Nama, in studio here. Uh, coming up in just a moment, we're going to talk about Ice Wars. Really cool uh, new TV show slash uh, there's going to be a movie behind the scenes, I believe. Hockey Fights on Ice. We're going to talk with Charlie in just a moment. Uh, before we do, uh, we got a couple of hot listings uh, we want to let you know about here uh, in beautiful Tampa Bay. Uh, we've got a listing on Burger Road in Lutz, Florida. This is a $2 million listing of ours, uh, just over $2 million. We've got a mansion for sale. This is 10,000 square feet, nine bedrooms, 12 bath. Uh, you got an indoor pool, full bar, oversized deck, full tennis court, movie theater, uh, library, sauna, two master suites, and a grand balcony. 3704 Burger Road in Lutz, Florida. This is Hillsborough County. Uh, one of our hot listings right here in beautiful Tampa Bay. Uh, we also have a property that we've got a co-listing on at 530 Heaton Forest Road. Uh, Heaton Forest is in High Hamptons, North Carolina, uh, on the golf course. you got 11 bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, 10,000 square feet. Uh, we got a mansion as a co-listing for sale here uh, with Bill DeVore's team, uh, luxury real estate agent in the Carolinas, Keller Williams Professionals, KW Professionals, uh, Keller Williams Realty. Uh, beautiful property, seven spacious bedrooms, seven lavish bathrooms, complemented by a separate guest house that also features four bedrooms and three stylish bathrooms. Beautiful property, 530 Heaton Forest Road, Cashiers, Carolina, North Carolina. And you can see all of our real estate listings at PlatinumCoastalElite.com. This is God's country. All right. Uh, Charlie, welcome to the program. Appreciate you coming me. in. Thank you for having me. And, you know, Stay one of the me. things I love, man, is, is this, just this an entre entrepreneurial spirit, the, the, the American dream, and, and just the way that, you know, in this country, man, you, you can do anything. You, you know, no matter what skin color, no matter where you're from, uh, background, ethnicity, none of that matters. All that matters is that you have the drive, you have the wherewithal and the want to. But this is so innovative, man. Tell me about it. How did you get this idea? How did this start? Well, the idea came off the ground Actually, a friend of mine was at a hockey game, yeah. and uh, he's watching the fans interact with the game. And uh, when goals were scored, people weren't really paying attention. But when the fight started, 18,000 people were on their feet. Yeah. So he said, why don't we just take it to the ice and uh, start with just the fights? And that's what we did. And it's been received very well. And, I love it. Uh, I like what you said about the United States. When yeah. they get behind something, and they're behind us now, coming from Canada to here, it's yeah. been amazing. The reception yeah. and... Uh, the notoriety we're gaining slowly, it's very, very, very well received. And so this started in Canada? Yes, we did our first three fights in Canada. It was well received there, but much smaller population in Canada than the U.S. And I think yeah. the, the U.S. has an entrepreneurial mind. Yeah. The people here, it is the land of opportunity. Exactly. Being a Canadian and seeing how business is done here is very exciting for me. Yeah. What are, what are some of the contrasts that you see, you know, uh, business-wise, personal-wise? Well, I think business-wise, everybody here uh, has the dream. In Canada, it's been kind of stifled. The government there has made it impossible to, to, to really follow your dreams. Right. I think the U.S. is a, a much more positive attitude. Yep. Uh, uh, states like Florida, especially, yeah. are really, and Wyoming, where we did our first fights. Yeah. We weren't able to get sanctioned anywhere. Uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, the Sports Combat Commission there got behind us and opened the doors for us. And they're allowing entrepreneurs like myself to succeed. I and, love it. And Florida is the same way. Yeah, and I, I'm looking forward to. We, we got invited yesterday to go to the, one of the first fights, or I believe, or, or one of the fights coming up in, in Wyoming. That's correct. It'll be yeah. September 16th in Cheyenne, Wyoming again. That'll be our second fight there. Yeah. Uh, our first fight was uh, August 6th, and so September 16th will be. Or sorry, it was July 15th. I got mixed up there. The uh, September 16th is the next date in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be so cool, man. I look forward to that. And so, tell us, you know, what what is it? It's actually so. This is this is a kind of a almost kind of an octagon setup. You're on ice, so you, you got to have that 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 hockey uh, kind of a background, the skating background, and it's kind of known as the enforcers game, right? These enforcers in. Uh, in hockey, that would be the ones to go out and like, hey, let's go take out their best player, or let's go fight that guy and throw him off his game, kind of get him out of the out of his rhythm or something uh, to those effect. But that's essentially what you've created, right? Well, it's essentially what we've created, and the enforcer is being taken out of the game now. Two uh, fans are upset about it, but they've removed the enforcers from the game. Right, uh, made it more of a game of uh, finesse. 
Yep. And uh, a lot of fans miss the hockey fighting. And, yep. and a lot of the enforcers now are destined to be playing their uh, lives in the minor leagues. This is opening up a lot of doors for the enforcers, for new careers. They yeah. make more money fighting, and they love what they do. Yeah. Uh, people don't realize that a lot of these guys would come for free. They love the, uh, <laughs> they love the sport. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, you're correct. A lot of the guys are also MMA fighters and stuff on the ice. Or off the ice, sorry. But on the ice, yeah. you can't be an MMA fighter, throw on some skates and try it. Your luck with these guys. We had a great fighter. Uh, in our last fights was a professional Muay Thai fighter. Yeah. Who was also a minor hockey player. Uh, he, he was surprised at how tough the guys were, and he went out in the first round, and, and he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. What but, was his name? Uh, Chris Lockhart. Chris Lockhart. Yeah, professional uh, Muay Thai fighter. Yeah. And great guy, but uh, he, he was surprised at how, how different it is when you're on skates, I think. Yeah, and, and he loved it. He's coming back for the next one. Yeah, exactly. And if you just joined us, uh, we're talking with Charlie Nama here. Uh, he is uh, the creator, the inventor of Ice Wars, uh, hockey, basically hockey fights on ice. And uh, tell me, so is this, is this televised, or how can people find out more about it? How can we see this? Well, you can go to our website, iwifights.com, but we've been uh, pay-per-view in over 200 countries uh, on all three fights, and that went very well. Um, our next step is a weekly tv show which is uh being uh produced working on the production end of it right now it should start in uh, later in the year and we're going to have a weekly fight friday night fights building up to the pay-per-views so that'll be very filmed cool. in, in atlanta georgia if everything goes well yeah very cool and you know at dinner uh, last night i was telling you a little about our background with uh, ken shamrock i've got to give ken a call still and see you know what his interest might be if he has any interest in it uh you had mentioned also you got a little bit of your traction or maybe some early interviews with like uh, pat mcafee's show very popular yes. uh, espn personality and yes yes he, he, he announced our first fights live for us and he's been a great supporter and a great guy um, we've had some shows like Gutfelt Show. It was one I didn't even know what Gutfelt was, to tell the truth, until my yeah, friend started Greg calling Gutfeld. me. And uh, they did about a five- or ten-minute uh, show on us, and, and uh, it's brought a lot of exposure, obviously. Right? Yeah. I didn't realize how big their audience is, but it's huge. And, yeah. and now I'm a fan of the show. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He's funny. He actually, Gutfeld actually took over late night, like a lot of these you know legacy media channels, the ABCs, the, you know, the CBS, uh, which back in the day, I guess it used to be a lot better with Johnny Carson and some of these different names. But now that, you know, the, those companies, those uh you know, networks have gone so woke, essentially, that, you know, it, it has such a one-sided point of view. They're pointing out these things. Uh, but anyways, a little, little off topic there. I can I can ride into these bunny trails kind of easy. But oh, yeah, I want to say, you. yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I agree with you. I, yeah. I, I mean, I've been following uh, American politics for the last four years, and <laughs> it can be very one-sided. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I get what you're talking about. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. And uh, so, Charlie, tell me, um, tell me what else, man. I mean, there's a lot of cool things here, a lot of, you know, opportunity, because I think it, it's hitting on a really cool button right now, too, uh, with the American culture. I was just watching the uh, the interview with Tucker Carlson and Ice Cube, and he asked Ice Cube the question about, you know, this kind of attack on men these days, this masculinity, uh, you know, this whole thing about, you know, these beta males, you know, trying to feminize our country, trying to feminize. Uh, but, I, you know, I think there's a underlying, you know, meat eating, you know, group of men out there that just we like to see this kind of stuff. We, we like to see these these types of, uh, you know, fights. I don't know if it's our barbarian, uh, you know, underpinnings in, in our, our personalities, but, you know, it's interesting. It's entertaining. And, you know, hey. Dang it, we want to see it. <laughs> well, it's exciting, and, and uh, meat eaters is what you said. And these boys are meat eaters. <laughs> yeah. they, they, you know, they, they like to put on a good show, and they go for a beer afterwards. Uh, yeah. th this is what they like to do, and, and, and yes, it's exciting. Um, I, I don't care who you are. I, I think any type of fighting, a, a combat sport, is yeah. exciting, and this is one of the most exciting because it's fast and furious. Yep. There's two one-minute rounds, so the boys don't have time to go to sleep and dance around for six or eight rounds. They're right at it. Uh, two one-minute rounds. Two one-minute rounds. And Man. a draw called, there's a 30-second icebreaker, and they finish it off. That's action-packed. So uh, our producer, Alex, here is also a, a champion in uh, MMA fighting and has been involved in, in uh, you know, fighting the fight game his whole life. And he's trained me and, you know, taught me some some stuff here with kickboxing and, and different grappling. But uh, I wanted to see if he might have a question for you. Sure. Uh, so one more time, how, how did it come to fruition? And obviously, that when you guys like uh, made the name and stuff and everything, how did you decide, decide to go with the, the branding that the way the way that you have? And, and, uh... Well, we 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 went. It was originally called Hockey Enforcers, um, but we thought it was more of a war actually than an enforcement. Um, so we went with Ice Wars, 
And we branded it as Ice Wars International because we plan to go international. We've had lots of interest from Europe. Um, actually, just about, I would say, 20 or 30 countries have reached out to us. On our pay-per-views, we've done at least 30 countries have ordered the pay-per-views. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty wide uh, audience for the sport because hockey is worldwide. Hockey's yeah. played in just about every country, Japan, China. Cool. We've had fighters reach out from Korea. So wow, very cool. It's got man. a big audience base. So I just recently worked um, a local MMA event, helped to, to manage uh, the, the fighters and stuff in the back, get them started prep, get them on deck and everything, locker, locker room manager. And, uh, you know, it's uh, amateur and, and some pro work as well. Um, the venue, I mean, how, how did you guys go? Like your, your first show, how many, the advertising, how many seats did you have? And then where, where are you guys at now? Well, you know, that, that's the thing. The first two shows um, were about a 1,200 uh, capability for the audience, capacity, sorry. Um, and we did the same thing in Cheyenne. And then this time we're doing it outdoor in China, and they figure we'll grow from 1,200, they're hoping to 3,000, 3,500 people in the audience, and that's great in a small town, and we'll just slowly grow our venues. We don't want to overstep our boundaries and have an empty arena, but as fans are catching on to this, it, it, the tickets are selling faster and faster, and as well as the pay-per-views. So. That's awesome, man. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some more. What's the, the website one more time to be able to get more information and see? IWIfights.com. F-I-G-H-T-S.com. IWIfights.com. That's the website. We're talking with Charlie Nama here. Uh, Ice Wars. Ice Wars International Fights. And, uh, man, I'm excited about it. Who's, who's some of your top names right now? Do you have some crossovers? Some, we, we were talking a little bit about last night about how, you know, Jake Paul and, you know, these different fights yeah. they have. A lot of those fights are kind of set up, like the Mayweather, those fights we kind of said. You know, those are, you know, if Mayweather really wanted to fight the, the Jake Paul guy, he probably would have took him out pretty quickly. But they were dancing around making $80 million. You can't blame them, right? But in your sport, tell, tell me, like, what are some of the bigger names or people well, that, that folks might know? Well, the bigger names are we've had just a fellow apply from uh, Bare Knuckle Boxing. Zach Kelmus is yep. his name. Um, he's done very well in the Bare Knuckle Boxing, or, sorry, Bare Knuckle Boxing Circuit, um, and he's also a hockey player. Our guys are mostly minor league hockey players that are very famous in their own cities okay. where, where they play hockey. So, like, Ryan Devine, for instance, he's the champion now. Um, you know, he plays minor league hockey, but in his own area, he's a very famous fighter. Yeah. Uh, the big names uh, are, are sort of uh, going to be developed by us, I think. Yeah. You know, we're building characters. Right. And, and uh, they're getting more and more exposure uh, nationwide through us. Right. So their audiences will grow. Yeah. And I think you'll start to hear their names more and more as we grow. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, what else do we need to know or what else should we know about this, Charlie? Well, I, I think uh, I think just keep your eyes keep your eyes on it and watch it grow. And I think it's exciting. And uh, we've got some great guys like from UFC uh, like Ian Heinish, the Hurricane. Um, he's one of our broadcasters. Um, Chris Camozzi is getting very involved. Uh, he's a bare knuckle champ. So we, they've got, uh, they like these fights. And in fact, they say they're fast and furious, and they're, they're very excited by it. So to have guys with that level of expertise in the fight game, yeah, I say that we're onto something. Uh, it excites me yeah. even more. Yeah, really cool, man. Yeah, be, be interesting and, and uh, you know game changing too if you get Joe Rogan interested at some point somehow. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. For sure, that would be great. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we uh, we'd love to have guys like that talk about it, and I'm sure we will. So the next fight, uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, September sixteenth. September sixteenth. Yeah. September sixteenth. Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, we've got the the fights out there. So they're one. Uh, two one-minute rounds. How, yes. many, how many fights do you have in a night? We have 12 fights last time. We have an eight-man round-robin tournament, cool. awesome. and then we have what's called grudge matches. Nice. So the guys that want to go with each other set it up, and uh, away they go. So they, they go for two one-minute rounds. The eight-man round-robin, you have to fight three times in one evening to win the event. Wow, okay. Yeah, so the guys are in condition, and they're yeah. training harder and harder, and uh, it, it's, 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 a, it's a quality product. Very cool. Yes. Well, hey, thanks for spending some time Thank with you. us here, and, and uh, make sure you check out the website, folks. It's IWIfights.com. Uh, Charlie Nama, pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. All right, hey, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk with Shane Socash. Uh, Shane is our expert contributor in precious metals uh, diamonds jewelry and a lot of folks are looking for those alternative investment opportunities right now david reynolds jewelry and coin uh, owner coming up here with us shane socash consumer quarterback show make sure you check us out online consumerqb.com hey this is grant cardone and you've been listening to the phenomenal brandon rhymes the consumer quarterback show 